What's up everyone? So this one might be kind of long because uh, I'm going over 10 different publishers in the indie house space that all accept submission. So this video is for people who want to or have a creator on comic series that they want to put out into the direct market and they're looking for a publisher that accepts submissions. And I'm not talking about kind of like alternative genre books or manga or full graphic novels. I'm talking about your typical floppies in English that you want to release to mainstream, uh, in mainstream genres to comic shops in um, the North America. Um, so for those that are looking for that, I give audience size, uh, sales numbers, along with general relevant info um, to help you with kind of your choices and kind of what it looks like when you go from the mainstream end all the way down to new uh, unknown indie house publishers and what can, you can expect from them as far as sales and what the benefits and kind of unique aspects to each one of these companies is. So if that sounds interesting, let's go. So the 10 I'm going over are Image Comics, Dark Horse Comics, Black Mask Studios, Scout Comics, Sumerian Comics, Mad Cave, Antarctic Press, Blood Moon Comics, Red 5, and Source Point Press. The, I'm not going in the, uh, these in any kind of like order as far as ranking. Uh, it's pretty much just how I did my research. But like I said, I apologize. It's going to be kind of long-winded because I did, you know, this is a lot of information to go into. So I'll start with Scout Comics. They're, I have direct experience with them, so that's probably why I started with them. They're known for books like mine, which was It Eats What Feeds It. They're known for Philip Kennedy Johnson's Smoke Town, and Philip Kennedy Johnson is now an, a, a well-known name, name in comics. I think at the time he was still fairly new. They're known for like uh, White Ash and Stabity Bunny and countless others. And I compare them to Image because they release a lot of books from independent creators every month. But compared to Image, they are basically a level of magnitude smaller when it comes to reach. So let's just say if you were like a first time creator and you launched with uh, Scout you can expect to get about, you know, one-tenth of the sales as you would with Image if you were at the same level, as just on a general sales kind of and reach and audience size. Um, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. And you'll notice whenever I go over the sales numbers for so many of these other publishers, you'll see that it's very much the same. Image just kind of trumps everybody when it comes to size, with with the exception of a few others. Um, so, with that being said, the Scouts' kind of main highlight is that their whole executive team has decades of experience in high-level positions within film, comic, and finance industries, and they're known for sort of uh, ushering their properties into development with production studios. I believe they're managed by a well-known uh, management company in, in the film industry. Um, they have at least 10, probably closer to 20, um, of their comics that have been optioned or even in development to be films or TV. And that's kind of their core highlight is like their... Um, kind of bridging the gap for the inter entertainment industry with independent comics. Um, and at the same time, they steadily sell comics. And not just they, uh, not just like through comic shops, but they have a lot of different ways that they sell books on their own website. They go through um, whatnot and things like that to where getting a book with them it is like a, a pretty um, established line of success on its own, plus it kind of can jumpstart you into expanding into other realms. So as far as like sales numbers, so all the numbers I took from sales, they are from one month. It was April of 2022. And I basically just handpicked three different titles, usually a number one or two number ones if they had them, 
and then a few of their later issues like a number two or number three just so you can see what are like their average numbers so for scout in april of 2022 they had vanity number one which launched they launched at 4101 they also had david burns canceled which launched at 3741 and then cult of icarus launched uh number two sold 1122 so you can kind of think of that as like just that's not your base case for everything but if you know a random pull like that's what they had so like vanity sold about 4000 at their launch you can probably expect their number 2 to be something like cult of icarus about 1122 and then so to compare you know so I'll next move to image comics like i said they're a level of magnitude lower so like a typical image hit sold like Bloodstained Teeth sold 44,805 for their number one in April of 2022. And their A Town Called Terror launched at 27,373. And then their Slumber number two, 11,578. All those, three of those are were released by established creators, however. Um, if there are some image books that when they aren't established creators, they don't always launch that high. Um, you know, it's still a rarity for a book to launch over 20,000, especially from an unknown creator. So whenever you see it happen, and I'll show you there's other um, companies that have their early creators do this, it's a pretty big deal. So the next one, yeah, I'm just going backwards as image. So image is... If, for those who don't know, they're the biggest creator-owned comics publisher, founded in the early 90s by some of the most legendary names in comics, and they've released some of the biggest titles such as Spawn, The Walking Dead, Saga, Kick-Ass, and tons of others. Um, it's interesting for us and for the lesser-known first-time creators is that they do release um, lesser-known comics, um, and... When that happens, you kind of have the same as Scout, like all the same abilities and kind of uh, access to success that you can ever want as far as, you know, the credibility by having that licensed I logo on your book, kind of the stamp of approval from those that the powers that be. Um, and then, you know, the, everything else that comes with it. Um, as far as like access to uh, studios and things like that, I think that probably the most interesting thing of note is like th just because you have image doesn't mean you're like ushered into you know behind the curtain or anything like that. It's pretty it much like it's still everything lies in your hands. Um, e marketing promotion all still lies in the creator um, and everything else beyond that. Um, so it's not like a, a golden ticket just to get with them as far as any expectations for, from sales to, to critical acclaim or anything like that. They still have plenty of titles that you uh, don't even know of uh, in addition to those that everyone knows. The third one I'm going to go over is Black Mass Studio. So Black Mass was founded about 10 years ago in 2012. It's had many big names involved with it and has a distribution deal with Simon & Schuster. It's, it's, it's known for best-selling books like Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, God Killer, and Young Terrorists. All of those, or at least two of those, I think were written by their founder, uh, which I believe his name is Matt Pizzolo, or Pizzolo. I would say my biggest note with Black Mask is their large swing in sales depending on creators and their association with politically motivated comics. So some of their hits launch at huge numbers, well above 20,000, while others fail to break even a few thousand. Um, and it's one of those companies that you'll definitely want to read their books and check out their content to see if you match their vibe. Because if you do, if you've got like a more stylized, alternative, message-driven story, you would do better with Black Mass than you would do with someone else. Um, so... Uh, you know, but if you're just, you know, writing a typical like horror, action, sci-fi, fantasy, you may want to go with a different publisher as opposed to Black Mask. But if you have something that's a bit more out there, um, or like I was saying, message-driven or like kind of like 
political ideologies or whatever. Um, Black Mask, I think, is kind of known for that. But they're also known for like more like erotic and kind of obscure titles. So not just like political. They, they have a wide range. But like I was saying, they're just not your typical like um, average run of the mill. Just like oh, another horror comic, another sci-fi comic. They each one of them is sort of eclectic. Um, so whenever it comes to sales, like you can see, like I said, they're they have. Some of their biggest ones, like Four Kids Walking to a Bank, launched at over 31,000 copies for their first printing. But like I pulled from April's numbers, they didn't release any number ones. And what they did have was like Hecate's Will number three, which sold 1,225 copies. And then Destiny New York number 10, which sold 936. Um, But the fact that that's still selling that at a number 10 shows that Destiny New York was probably a pretty good hit at the start but you'll also see some of these other publishers that i talk about they're just always selling at least one to two thousand even if they're at number you know 98 um the next company i'm going to go over is dark horse so dark horse is another one of those probably like top four at least top six for sure of like mainstream indie comic publishers it was founded in the 80s it's um probably the biggest after image it's known for the so also just like image some of the biggest names hellboy frank miller classics like sin city and the 300 um the umbrella academy which um uh, was also a hit on netflix you know so they've got a lot of powerhouse names under them however much like image they publish creator on comics by new creators and like lesser known Um, writers and a good example is James Powell's House of Fear comic Um, and James Powell has a um, like an email email newsletter and he kind of did an expose of his experience with Dark Horse um, sort of um, detailing everything you'd really want to know from like kind of his contract details marketing mistakes he had his sales numbers his book was sort of a teen or a preteen targeted book that he just did a, a Kickstarter for it and then it ultimately got like a pretty large print run through Dark Horse for free comic book day. And, um, and he, but kind of the whole brilliance of that was it, it kind of showed like, you know, what you would want to know as far as like, okay, so you know Dark Horse, known for things like Hellboy. And then there's this unknown creator. What did his sales do? And like, did it do much for his career? And you learn that from um, James Powell's email newsletter, and it was really interesting. Um, for him, it was like kind of um, it wasn't that great in sales, and he kind of explains why it was. But at the same time, when you look at the numbers of other comics, especially since he got a lot printed for free because I did like a marketing campaign for a free comic book day, um, it's it's still great and got him a, a lot of credibility and things like that. Um, so like if you pull out the Dark Horse numbers from April, you can see they're like typical um, series. Uh, Breakout number one, that's the name of the, the, the title of the series, it's called Breakout. It launched at 8,096. British Paranormal Society number one launched at 7,940. And then their like license title you can see. So Stranger Things number two launched at 8,475. Um, so you can see like that if you were to compare like Image kind of as number one and then Scout on the lower end as far like Dark Horse is still like right there in the middle, you know. Um launching at 8,000 that you know that's you anybody would love to have that as a um, indie comic creator Uh, and then most likely that's the probably one of the better things with Dark Horse is not only do you kind of get that credibility with such a um, you know industry name they maintain I think at least a certain amount of their sales just because comic shops just you know they buy whatever dark horse comes out that's not always the same for some of the lesser known names like the ones i'll move on to like mad cave studios 
You know, not every comic shop just buys, you know, almost anything that Dark Horse puts out. But they will buy something from Mad Cave if it, like, piques their interest. So Mad Cave was founded fairly recently in 2014. They they published uh, mainstream genre creator-owned comics. So unlike Black Mask, these are like, you know, if you don't have something super obscure, if you just have your typical cool horror, sci-fi, fantasy, crime, adventure kind of book... Um, this is who you'd want to look to. They, like the others, they have a distribution deal for bookstores with Simon & Schuster. I feel like Mad Cave's still, like, new and relatively un- unknown, except for, like, fans of indie comics. But they've had a few breakout successes in a lot of best-selling series, like Nottingham. Um, and much like Scout Comics, they also have a deal with... Um, a management company that is like kind of streamlines to develop their IP into um, films and TV. And so they're definitely a rising company. Um, but as far as sales, I want to say that they're very similar to something to someone like Scout uh, with some breakout successes like Nottingham. And you'll see in April of last year, Nottingham number six sold 8,961. That's so Nottingham number six is selling better than a dark horse number one. So that's how much of a success Nottingham is. But then you'll see something like Speed Republic number three from Mad Cave is several is selling seven hundred and sixty six. So like that's a pretty wide variance. Um and then la- the last session number five sold one thousand two hundred and twelve. So you can imagine like if that is kind of their typical series. Nottingham's super success, the last session was probably, you know, close to kind of their average. And then Speed Republic probably maybe just dropped off hardcore or just never had that strong of a launch from the get-go. Or maybe that book was sort of niche or something like that. But that's kind of a a, a snapshot of their sales. Uh, Now I'm moving on to uh, Red 5. So... They didn't really have any breakout success stories that I uh, am aware of or could find, really. Um, Or really any series with well-known creators. But I know they've been around in the indie space for a while, since probably like the early 2000s. And they have had some titles optioned for TV, I believe. And they're a professional company through and through. However, when it comes to kind of the spectrum that I'm displaying here, they're probably on the lower end when it comes to sales and exposure. Um, they also, I believe, have a distribution deal with Simon & Schuster for bookstores. Um, and they release like mainstream genre comics. Um, but they release uh, strangely. So like whenever I pulled the sales numbers for April of last year, they, they release like multiple issues all in the same month. So you'll see like Lead City number one uh, sold 1,108 copies, and then also Lead City number two was released in the same month and sold 579. Um, and so most of the time that would happen if like something sold so well that they continued selling into the next month. However, I don't think that happened um, because I also saw download number two, download number three, and download number four also had sales numbers around the same amount in the same month, indicating like maybe they... They sold download number one the month before, and then two, three, and four in the next month, like kind of all at once or something like that. I may be wrong. That's just how their sales numbers are um, posted. Um, The next one I'm going to go over is Blood Moon. So Blood Moon is super new, like within the past year or two, and I don't know much about them, um, but I wanted to focus on them because right now, like this year, they are getting more and more attention. Because I've seen the founder on Twitter Spaces talking to indie creators about their books and publishing options. And since they're niche, they're focused mainly on horror, um, they get attention in the horror f- space. So I've been seeing a lot of them, so I want to put them on here. And whenever I looked up their sales, like they're not bad. So like they, much like the other ones, they're launching. They, even their number twos and threes are selling over 1,000 issues. Um, so like in April of, of last year... Usher of the Dead, um, number two, sold 1,117 copies. Um, they, I, you know, so they're targeting 
up and coming creator, so they're someone probably worth looking into. Um, but they're also new, and that being said, I don't think they have like a Simon and Schuster deal with bookstores. I think they're mo mostly probably when it comes to selling, they might do something like to where they're simultaneously re uh, selling on Kickstarter and on their and like getting sales to their website, trying to build up a direct fan base. Um, but that being said, like they have some established creators um, on with them, and they seem to be having decent success for uh, so far. Sourcepoint Press is one of the better known indie publishers that focus on horror, sci-fi, and fantasy, and they have multiple books from established creators, like I think Dirk Manning, Cullen Bunn, uh, also plenty with lesser known and, and first-time creators. Uh, they've had several of their series optioned for films. Uh, I think they had like kind of a whole bundle that were optioned or put into development uh, last year, uh, like The Curse of Cleaver County was in that list. And then I think there was one that, or like, they were like maybe westerns. Um, they have an exclusive deal with Global Comics, with that's Global Comics with an X for digital distribution. Um, so they're definitely at the top of the list for creators um, who, if you got your series was passed by like the big names, if you submit to Image and get denied, um, definitely look into Source Point because they have quality books. Um, and they have a steady fan base, and um, you, their sales numbers are kind of right there with some of the others, like Mad Cave and Scout. So, like, if you look at SourcePoint sales numbers, uh, Corollary number one launched at 2,004 copies, and then Darkness, Cover of Darkness number four launched at 1,643 copies. So that's not bad, you know. I mean, they're launching at, you know above a thousand and uh, consistently selling above a thousand so that you know that uh, you know that's not nothing um this next one i'm going over i have sort of direct experience with although um i ultimately released my series with what not publishing but uh it was sumerian was someone i almost went with um that's a story for another thing but it was wasn't anything to do with them it was just kind of a one of those things of who I was directly correlated with. There was a, a changing of management at the companies. And so Sumerian was formerly known as Behemoth Comics um, until they were sold to Sumerian Records about a year ago. And Sumerian Comics is now a division of Sumerian Records and Films, so they're well-connected to both the film and music industry, and their books often sell very well compared to other newer publishers. Um, Sumerian Records is has some of the bigger biggest names you would know i think like even smashing pumpkins and circa survive and names like that um and the founder is like well established in the film industry has even made a, a, a know for sure a movie uh and some tv series all in kind of like the heavy metal uh satanic kind of um genre i can't remember the names of them off the top of my head but I discovered them because a few years ago, they like Behemoth was started not that long ago, probably within, I want to say like five years ago, um, and they released the A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, created by the director of the hit film of the same name. Um, and they basically announced on their website, they state that they sell over half a million comic books yearly, with, uh, um, and they have global distribution with Simon & Schuster amongst others. They've had a lot of big selling books. Uh, Dam Damian Connolly's You Promised You Me Comics was one of their biggest successes. And it launched, I believe, over 50K, earned critical acclaim. And they've had multiple other series launch over 20,000. And even some of their like lesser hits still consistently sell like between five and 10,000 issues and, launched over, and launch at over 10,000. So if you're into dark genre comics and you have like a quality sci-fi horror kind of book sumerian should be at the top of your list so like look so in april of last year star girl number one launched at 9091 dark beach number one launched at 7916 um and those are just kind of your typical run-of-the-mill sumerian books which are selling quite high in the indie comic space um like you saw some of like the others were launching at like 2000 um so, 
The last one I'm going to go over is Antarctic Press. And Antarctic Press is a bit different from the others. They have long-running titles like Gold Diggers and um, big like hits in the indie space like Rags and Punchline. And they're all creator-owned comics, but they don't release many like new titles. Um, and But they're important for you to look at because they do release short stories um, or like zines. Or like they they'll release in uh, creator own comics in in like an anthology or like a zine format, including manga. So, like rather than releasing an issue by issue of your series, they'll release part of your story in one of their zines month to month. Um, so if you're a new creator, specifically an early career artist, they should be look look into submitting. Um, there are comic shop sales for new and unknown books. Uh, aren't very high but like i was saying since mostly what they release are like uh they're just like they, they have kind of like an, an a typical names like manga z and then they release series under that and and so it's a like long running and each one you get a little bit of a new different kind of series and those will sell decently so like if you pull from april patriotica united number three sold two thousand um, and 15 issues horror comics number nine sold 1206 but then something like alias black and white number four sold less than 500 copies um so hopefully that makes sense you can research them yourself and obviously all these i encourage everybody to do your own research but kind of my sum up you'll see is that you know there's no the only like almost who no matter who you go with as far as an indie comic publisher or creator owned comic publisher, these are the ones that accept submissions, and the success of you does not necessarily depend upon the publisher. It really depends on your book, and so there's some that you'll like want to get on strictly because it's like kind of no matter what you're gonna sell a decent amount. But some, almost all the others, it almost like kind of doesn't matter as long as your book matches their quality and genre. Um, and then the success of your series depends mostly on you and not the publisher. Because you'll have breakout successes in any one of these that sell well over the average book from one of the others. So um, there's no one that I would say is like better than the other depending on what you're trying to do. If you have your tip, it's like, it's just look at the other books that are published by these publishers and um, basically see which one match your quality, um, art kind of style, and genre, and then just submit to the, to the top and then move on down, and then just ignore the ones that aren't in your realm. There's no point in being like, well, I didn't get this person, so I'm going to submit to somebody that, you know, isn't really in my wheelhouse. Because it's just it's just like the success to really ultimately depends on you. And I would just go for some of the ones that are known for sales, known for uh, having connections in other industries. And then the rest is just like come up with your own marketing plan so that you can be successful no matter who your publisher is. And if you don't get with one of the any of these publishers... That doesn't mean that you can't have success on Kickstarter. If, in, in, like I've shown in many of my other videos, you can do just as well, if not better, um, releasing self-publishing than you could with any of these guys. So on that note, that's all I'm going to say. Sorry it was so long. Um, and uh, take care. Like and subscribe, I guess, or whatever. Thanks. Bye.